This tutorial is going to focus on the Working Memory Model by Badley and Hitch, and specifically the 1974 original version of the model. The Working Memory Model just focuses on short-term memory, and sees memory as an active store where information can be held and manipulated. The Working Memory Model is a challenge to the earlier work on the Multistore Model by Atkinson and Schifrin, which sees short-term memory as passive and unitary. There are three components to the working memory model. The first is the central executive. The central executive is like the boss which coordinates the memory system and allocates resources to the other two slave systems. It has a very limited capacity but it can deal with cognitive and problem solving tasks. It can be helpful to think of the central executive a little bit like the fat controller from Thomas the Tank Engine. When information comes in, the central executive decides which slave system is best suited to deal with that type of information and directs it accordingly. For AO2, if we're looking at evaluating the central executive, very little is known about the nature of the CE and its role in the memory process, which is problematic as it is one of the key components. The first of the slave systems is called the phonological loop and there are two parts to this. The articulatory control process can be thought of as the inner voice. This uses subvocal rehearsal, which is where you mentally repeat the information to yourself to stop you from forgetting it. The second part of the phonological loop is called the phonological store, which is the inner ear, and this can hold the memory of sounds for up to two seconds without rehearsal. For AO2, we can look at supporting research from Badley, who investigated the word length effect. He found that participants were able to recall more short words than long words in the same amount of time, which suggests that the capacity of the phonological loop is determined by how long it takes to say the words. This supports the phonological loop, as it takes the same amount of time for you to think the word as it does to say it out loud. The second slave system is called the visuospatial sketch pad, or sometimes called scratch pad, and this is able to store and manipulate visual images and spatial information, a bit like an inner eye. If you're asked to remember the details from a picture that you've just been shown, you'll be able to conjure up an image of the picture in your mind's eye, and this is the visuospatial sketch pad at work. For AO2, we can look at supporting evidence from Gather Cole and Badley. They found that participants struggled to follow a moving point of light whilst at the same time describing the angles of a hollow letter F. This was difficult because both tasks used the visuospatial sketch pad and so the system was overworked. However, participants could easily follow the light whilst they were performing a verbal task as this used a separate slave system. Now let's look at some general strengths and weaknesses of the working memory model. For strengths, it's useful because it helps us to explain real world processes and problems, such as why we cannot process written and verbal information at the same time. This has practical applications in education. Also, PET scans provide evidence for the separate components in short term memory because different areas of the brain are activated during different tasks. The working memory model is also supported by the case study of KF, who sustained a brain injury from a motorcycle accident. His short-term memory was impaired verbally, but he was still able to process visual information, which demonstrates that there are two separate stores in short-term memory. Dual task studies, such as the one conducted by Gather Cole and Badley, also provide research support for working memory. One of the key weaknesses of the working memory model is that very little is known about the central executive and it's very difficult to study it empirically. This is problematic because it's one of the central components of the model. Also, working memory model is not comprehensive as it doesn't include any reference to sensory memory or long-term memory, or the transfer of information between the different stores. Lastly, another weakness is that the majority of supporting studies for the working memory model are lab experiments, 
and so they can be said to lack ecological validity. It then becomes difficult to generalise these findings to real-world situations.